What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 2. Hallelujah. Now the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, and Jeremiah chapter 1, if you saw that, or if you watched that video, is uh, pretty much just God giving Jeremiah his commission, telling him to speak to Judah and the men of Jerusalem and telling them that he's with him and he will protect him and he will give him the words to say hallelujah now the word of Yahuwah came to me saying and this is uh, Jesus who came to the prophets and gave them the message go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem saying, Thus says Yahuwah, rem I remember concerning you the devotion of your youth, the love of your betrothals, your following after me in the wilderness through a land not sown. Israel was holy to Yahuwah, the first of his harvest. God refers to us as plants. As crops. And that was the first of his harvest. His first uh, people. But they sinned and rebelled against him. The first, of his, the first of his harvest. All who ate of it became guilty. Because they rebelled against him. They partake, took in the same ways. Evil came upon them, declares Yahuwah. Hear the word of Yahuwah, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. So not, so this is speaking to all of Israel, which includes us. Thus says Yahuwah, What injustice did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me, and walked after emptiness, and became empty? They did not say, Where is Yahuwah who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and where no man dwelt? I brought you into a fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things, but you came and defiled my land. And in my, in my inheritance you made an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is Yahuwah? No one was seeking for God. They rebelled against him and began sinning against him. The priest did not say, Where is Yahuwah? Where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that did not profit. Therefore, I will contend with you, declares Yahuwah, and with your sons I will contend. Which uh, includes us. For cross to the coastlands of Kittim and see, and send to Kittim. Kedar, so Kittim, that's, uh, I believe that was uh, Cyprus, which is this island off, off Greece, and we see right here, Israel is uh, right here, that's Cyprus, that's uh, Turkey, off Turkey, actually. Well, yeah, it would be off Turkey, off Asia Minor. And Kedar, Kedar, uh, Kedar, I guess you would say it. That's how you would say it. Um, is Arabia. And according to the Bible atlas here, Arabia is shown right here. 
which would be modern day Syria or Iraq and, and South. And Arabia isn't the same thing as Saudi Arabia. I didn't used to know that. And when, first off, I'll just say uh, about Saudi Arabia. I'll just read this here. Or about Arabia uh, in comparison to Saudi Arabia. Um, the page don't want to pull up. It's, let's see. So Arabia is actually uh, referencing the Arabian Peninsula, which isn't only Saudi Arabia, but it's seven countries. Kuwait, Qatar, the UAE, uh, Oman, and Yemen, and also Bahrain. But what he, but here on the Bible Atlas is showing uh, more in the area of modern day Jordan, maybe even Syria or Iraq. But I think Arabia was uh, kind of that whole area going down south. I'd have to look more into it, but that's Kedar. Let's see. Therefore, I will yet contend with you, declares Yahuwah, and with your sons I will contend. For cross to the coastlands of Kittim and see, and send to Ket Kedar, Kedar, and observe closely, and see if, see if there has been such a thing as this. Has a nation changed gods when they were not gods to worship false gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder. Be very desolate, declares Yahuwah. Wow. So be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder. Be very desolate because of this. Because... The people of God turning away from him and turning to other gods and other things, other uh, idolatry. And other gods can and idols can be a lot of things. It doesn't have to be a actual another religion or another god or, an, or a statue or something. A lot of things, can, we can make a lot of things our god. Uh, there's a scripture that says, uh, whose god is their belly? their stomach, their appetite. Um, anything can be an idol or a god to us if we uh, put it over top of God or place more focus on it than God. Has a nation changed gods when they were not gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder. Be very desolate, declares Yahuwah. Desolate because people who aren't following him and turn away from him and and follow other gods aren't going to be in heaven, aren't going to be in his kingdom. That's why he says, heavens, be desolate. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. And uh, if we go to the scripture, when Jesus spoke about the living water here in John chapter 7, starting in verse 37, now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up 
stood and cried, saying, cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit. The Spirit is the living water. Whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So that's what it's saying here in, in Jeremiah 2. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The Spirit flows from, from him. It's his Spirit. And that's where life comes from. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. This is speaking about the false gods who, who can hold no water or spirit. Who have no spirit, who have no life. And uh, and if we go over to Psalm 135, verse 17, it speaks about these false, uh, these idols. And it says, they have ears, but they do not hear. And there is no breath in their mouths. But the word for breath there is ruach, which is spirit. There is no spirit in them. The idols, the false gods. And that's what I saw saying here in Jeremiah 2. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The water is a spirit. To hew for themselves cisterns. Broken cisterns. And a cistern... Uh, just so I don't... Just so I don't uh, speak this wrong. Uh, cistern, by definition, a tank for storing water. I was about to say a well, but uh, that would have been close. To hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water, that can hold no spirit. Speaking about the false gods. And um, I'll just say this, if you want to keep up with my, anyone that may want to keep up with the Bible studies, uh, you follow me on, you can either follow me on Facebook or, or YouTube, uh, Facebook slash Larry Newport Authentic with a K at the end instead of a C. And, um, and on YouTube at bit, B-I-T dot L-Y bit.ly slash Larry Newport and I'm not promoting myself the only reason I say this is because I can normally only share for a couple days and then my videos uh, on Facebook when I, I share in, on Facebook and the different Facebook groups and I can normally only share for a few days until they block me for a few for a few days and then they'll release the block and I can share again for a few days. That's generally how it's been recently. So, um, so a lot of, a lot of the people, uh, if you watch this on Facebook and the different Facebook groups, uh, you're probably missing a lot of my videos. And so just to put that out there, because I know I'm going to be blocked again. If you want to keep up with the studies, bit.ly slash Larry Newport, that's my YouTube channel. And, um, on Facebook, um, Larry Newport Authentic with a K instead of a C at, at uh, Facebook.com, uh, Larry Newport Authentic, slash Larry Newport Authentic. And um, the links are also 
in the descriptions of the videos here on Facebook. So, uh, back here in Jeremiah 2. Is Israel a slave? Or is he a homeborn servant? Why has he become a prey? The young lions have roared at him. Now this is speaking about the other nations. But this is actually a prophecy about our, our days and the young lions. I'm not going to speak too much about the young lions right now, but I believe uh, it represents members of the beast kingdom. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through the young lion scriptures right now, but I believe it can represent members of the beast kingdom. And uh, this is who is uh, going to come up against Israel here in these last days. Is Israel a slave? Or is he or is he a homeborn servant? Why has he become a prey? The young lions have roared at him. They have ro roared loudly. And they have made his land a waste. His cities have been destroyed without inhabitant. Also the men of Memphis and Tehaphanes have shaved the crown of your head. So Memphis and Tehaphanes, that's uh, places in Egypt. And we know Egypt in end time Bible prophecy is fulfilled in America. Even though there's still Egypt. Um, but And so is Assyria. And Assyria, Assyria is, is often linked in the scriptures to Egypt. Um, when it's referencing, in, in the end time prophecies, when it's referencing the U.S. So, also the men of Memphis and Tehaphanes have shaved the crown of your head. And so we see this in another scripture. In reference to Assyria. And what it's referencing. Shaving. The shaving of the head. First baldness. Represents mourning. And. Uh, that's what people. People would. Uh, basically the, the baldness. Shaving. The shaving of uh, your head represents. Uh, mourning. And. And. And seeking God. And. Uh, and also. Let me just go over to the scripture here. I believe it's also in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. I'm going to start in verse 20. In that day, the Lord will shave with a razor hired, hired from regions beyond the Euphrates, that is, the king of Assyria. The head, the head and the hair of the legs, and it will also remove the beard. And so this represents, like I said, mourning, sorrow, uh, but also, I mean, taking away uh, masculinity, basically. Removing the beard and the hair of the legs and, and speaking about attacking, attacking them and, uh, and disgracing them. And so, So back over here in Jeremiah 2, we also see the shaving of the head thing, which is uh, it's actually speaking about the same thing that it's spoken about in Isaiah 7. It's speaking about the same place, even though it says Memphis and Tehaphanes, that's uh, Egypt, which is also Assyria. Uh, it's uh, the U.S. and end time prophecy. Also, the men of an... 
First off, uh, the young lions have... I'm going to just re rewind at a line. The young lions have roared at him. They have roared loudly. And they have made his land a waste. His cities have been destroyed without inhabitant. Also, the men of Memphis and Tehaphanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not done this to yourself by forsaking Yahuwah your God when he led you in the way? See, if we forsake God, if we turn on God, we see throughout the scriptures, he may, might just give us up to the enemy. But if we follow him and truly follow him and trust in him, he's going to deliver us. Have you not done this to yourself by forsaking Yahuwah your God when he led you in the way? But now, what are you doing on the road to Egypt? Now, we also see this in other scriptures. I don't have them pulled up, but I believe it's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20, it would be 29 through 32, I believe, in reference to Egypt. And in reference to... Um, the people of God, both Judah and Israel, representing the Christians, leaning on Pharaoh, lean, going back to Egypt, trusting in Egypt. And I think it's also in Hosea that it speaks about this, how they trust in, uh, in Egypt. In, it's basically it's speaking about America, how they trust in America and trust in the leader of America. It's speaking about Donald Trump. Who else... And I, I don't have the scriptures pulled up to to reference in regards to this, but this is it's what it's speaking about, and um, it's it's uh like I said, it's mentioned uh, in Ezekiel, I believe, in Hosea as well. Um, that, and you know what? Let me let me look up at least part of it. It's about the people of God. Trusting in man. Trusting in help from this nation. Trusting in help from uh, the leader of this nation. And not only the, the Christians. We know there's a lot of Christians crazy about Trump. But also the Jews. There's a lot of Jews crazy about Trump. Uh, let me find this here. Here's one scripture. Uh... I'm going to start in verse 3. It's speaking about Pharaoh, which is also Gog. And as I've said before, I believe this is Trump. I believe he's going to be back in power. And he's going to... He's a major player in end-time Bible prophecy. Uh, verse uh, 3. Starting in verse 3, Isaiah 29. I mean, Ezekiel 29. And there's also, so this is this right here is a connection to the Gog Magog war. And but there's also other scriptures that show that the people of God are leaning on this character, leaning on Egypt, going back to Egypt for help rather than calling on God. Speak, uh, speak and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, just like I am against you, O Gog, the great monster that lies in the midst of his rivers. That it said, my, my Nile is mine, and I myself have made it. I will put hooks in your jaws. I will make the fish of your rivers cling to your scales, and I will bring you up out of the midst of your rivers. And all the fish of your rivers will cling to your scales. I will abandon you on the wilderness, and all the fish of your rivers will fall on the open field. You will not be brought together or gathered. I have given you for food to the beasts of the earth and to the birds of the sky. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt will know that I 
and Yahuwah. Because they have been because they have been only a staff made of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you by the hand, you tore uh, you broke and tore all their hands. And when they leaned on you, you broke and made all their loins quake. See? This is who's gonna turn on. This is who all all the people are trusting in. And who's going to turn on them? Everyone thinks Trump is going to save the day. That he's uh, the support of uh, Christianity. That he's the support of the people of God. But he's going to be the one to turn. He's going to be the one to turn on them. On us, on the people of God, the Jews and the Christians, both houses of Israel. Back in Jeremiah 2. Also the men of Memphis and Tehaphanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not done this to yourself by forsaking Yahuwah your God when he led you in the way? But now what are you doing on the road to Egypt? To drink the waters of the Nile? Or what are you doing on the road to, the, to Assyria? To drink the waters of the Euphrates? See, Egypt and Assyria is both speaking about the same place in end time Bible prophecy. And the waters represent people. But it's basically saying, why are you going to, to them? You're going to them for help. Is what it's saying. In other words. Why are you going to Egypt for help? Why, or why are you going to America for help? When you can come to me. Your own wickedness will correct you. And your apostasies will approve you. I mean reprove you. Not, not approve. Uh, reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter. For you to forsake Yahuwah your God. And the dread of me is not in you. The fear of God is not in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. For long ago I broke your yoke and tore off your bonds, but you said, I will not serve. This is speaking about not being obedient to God, not following Him, turning away from Him, forgetting Him. After being saved, after being delivered before, after knowing God is true, turning back on Him, turning your back on Him. For long ago I broke your yoke, and I tore off your bonds, but you said, I will not serve. For on every high hill and under every green tree you have laid down as a harlot. The people of God and the land of the people of God. That's the harlot. The harlot against God. Yet I planted you a choice vine, a completely faithful seed. How then have you turned yourself before me into a Degenerate into the de degenerate shoots of a foreign vine. Although you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, the stain of your iniquity is before me, declares the Lord God. How can you say, I am not defiled? I have not gone after the bales. Look at your way in the valley. Know what you have done. You are a swift young camel entangling her ways. A wild donkey accustomed to the wilderness that sniffs the wind in her passion. In the time of her heat, who can turn her away? All who seek her will not become weary. In her month, they will find her.
Keep your feet from being unshod. And with this, with the gospel, uh, that's at least in other scriptures. Feet with feet all. Basically, shoes of the gospel. Feet uh, prepared with the gospel. Keep your feet from being unshod. And your throat from thirst. Living water. But you said, it is hopeless. No, for I have loved strangers. And I will, and after them I will walk. They're talking about unrepentance. We can't be in any type of unrepentance. Even if we fall in... When we fall, we get back up and we follow God. We got to do our best to not fall, to not sin at all. But if we do, we get back up and we follow God. We don't say, oh, well, and keep doing what we're doing. We don't say we're saved by grace so we can live how we want to live. It doesn't matter. Because it does matter. It matters very much how we live. It's very serious. Keep your feet from being unshod and your throat from thirst. But you said, it is hopeless. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them I will walk. As the thief is shamed when he is discovered, so the house of Israel is shamed. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, who say to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone, you gave me birth. For they have turned their back on me, and not their face. But in their time of trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. How can we expect God to come save us if we're sinning against Him, if we're rebelling against Him, if we're not repentant? We need to be ashamed of our sins. We need to regret our sins. We need to despise our sins. And and seek God. We need to seek Him for forgiveness, for mercy for our sins. And we need to hate them. We need to never do them again. We need to be ashamed of our sins. We need to despise our sins. There's some teachers out here that that'll say, "Oh, we're well, we're saved by grace. We, we don't have, we're not ashamed. Even if we sin, we we have nothing to be ashamed of because it doesn't matter. God doesn't see that. Are you crazy? God doesn't see that. We have to stay clean. We have to keep on the wedding garment. We have to be pure." And that doesn't mean we're earning, trying to earn our salvation. It means we're, we're trying to live for God. And not sin and not do what condemned us in the first place. We need to reject and despise all our sins. And never do them again. As the thief is shamed when he is discovered, so the house of Israel is shamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests and their prophets who say to a tree, You are my father, and to a stone you gave me birth. For they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods which you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in, in the time of your trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Speaking to uh, Israel, modern day Israel. 
Why do you contend with me? You have all transgressed against me, declares Yahuwah. What are we doing? If we're sinning against God and rejecting His ways, rejecting correction, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why do you contend with me? You have all transgressed against me, declares Yahuwah. In vain I have struck, struck your sons. They accepted no chastening. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. And we know, uh, and wow, that's a prophecy about, and Jesus, Jesus talked about how they killed the prophets. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, heed the word of Yahuwah. And, I mean, what happened before will happen again. But God is going to give us eternal life. Hallelujah. O generation, heed the word of Yahuwah. Have I been a wilderness to Israel? Or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say, we are free to roam? We will no longer come to you. Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. And this is the same thing. That I was just speaking about. Why are my people. Why do my people say we are free to roam. We will no longer come to you. Basically now that we're saved. Uh, by grace. We, we don't have to worry about. Truly following God. We don't have to. Obedience doesn't matter. Can a virgin forget her ornaments. Which is our obedience to God. Or a bride her attire. That's the wedding garment. Which is our obedience, our righteousness to our actions. O generation, heed the word of Yahuwah. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say we are free to roam? We will no longer come to you. Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. How well you prepare your way to seek love. Therefore, even the wicked women you have taught your ways. Also on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor. You did not find them breaking in. But in spite of all these things, yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. And poor can also represent poor in spirit, people who don't know the Word of God very well, who are being deceived by these false doctrines. Also on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor. You did not find them breaking in. But in spite of all these, these things you said, I am innocent. Surely his, his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with you because you say, I have not sinned. See, we need to, like I said, we need to confess our sins. We need to reject our sins. We need to resist our sins. We need to be ashamed of our sins. And never do them again. Not just think it's okay to sin or to live in sin. 
or that that it doesn't matter. It does matter. Yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with you because you say I have not sinned. Why do you go around so much changing your way? Also, you will be put to shame by Egypt as you were put, put to shame by, by Assyria. This is what I was talking about earlier. The tables are going to turn and persecution is coming to this nation. But it's coming right at the end. The true per persecution. Also, you will be put to shame by Egypt as you were put to shame by Assyria. From this place also you will go out with your hands on your head. For Yahuwah has rejected those in whom you trust. And you will not prosper with them. And that's the end of Jeremiah 2. Let's walk in the ways of God. Let's make sure we're fully repentant. Let's despise our sins. Let's be ashamed of our sins. Let's fully reject our sins. Let's never sin again to the best of our ability. None of us are perfect. And the devil is still going to attack us and try to get us where we're weak, when we're weak. But we have to stay strong. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's be pure. Let's serve him with all our heart. Sin is not okay in any way at all. Yes, we've had our sins forgiven. Yes, if we do sin, not intentionally living in sin, but if we do sin... Um, and we confess our sins, He's Jesus will forgive us. We have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the righteous, who, for, who covers our sins. But that doesn't give us a license to sin. Sin is very serious, very serious. We need to resist it at all costs. Reject it at all costs. Despise it. Let's love what, what God loves and hate what he, he hates. We need to have the mind of Christ. Let's overcome. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him with all our heart. Stay in prayer. Stay in the word. And do his will in everything. Hallelujah. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. We need to warn the people. We need to do whatever God is calling us to do. We all we all have different positions in the body of Christ. Different things to do. We just have to be a good and faithful servant to him and do what he wants us to do. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. There's not much time left. The Bible tells us what's going to happen right before the day of the Lord, which is uh, when Jesus comes to bring judgment upon this world. And when he, when he comes to bring judgment upon this world, he's also coming to save his people. And um, you have an opportunity to be one of them. The wages of sin or the punishment for sin is death. Everyone's going to stand before God for judgment one day. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone's going to pay him respect and honor him. But for many, it's going to be too late. And anyone who hasn't had their sins forgiven is going to be thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, in body and soul. But God offers us life. And uh, so most people are going to die that first death, then die the second death after judgment. But God is so gracious that us living here in this final generation, we're going to be here. Unless we die beforehand, we're going to be here when Jesus comes on the clouds and everyone is going to see him, even though there's going to be a major deception about what's going on. 
But when that happens, well, first off, from my understanding of scriptures, this country is going to be destroyed. This place is going to be gone. And uh, the only ones left, to, left, the only ones surviving that are the ones who have been bought by the blood. The ones who have uh, given their life to Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. Turned to him. Believed in him for salvation. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order to live eternally. And none of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. And that's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Because we couldn't do it. It's not by works. We can't earn it. But Jesus lived a perfect life. He had temptations just like us, troubles just like us, but lived a perfect life. Did nothing wrong, not even in his mind. Not even in his heart. And... Through his perfection, he earned eternal life through his perfection because he, ne he never sinned. And that sin is what condemns us and, and separates us from God. But Jesus never sinned, and so he didn't deserve to die. He died for us. He laid down his life for us. So that through faith in him and what he did on the cross, he paid the sin penalty he paid the debt for our sins, the penalty for our sins. So that through faith in him, if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, we receive forgiveness of, of sins through faith. It's not by works. It can't be by works. We can't earn it. But it's through what he did. And if you believe that and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, he will. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit, which is the promise, the seal. Until the day of redemption, the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and understanding, helps you understand the Bible, and leads you to walk uh, in His ways. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And He'll give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. There's many people who are going to be transformed and meet the Lord in the air and be taken straight into eternal life when this uh, day comes. But like I said, most people are going to die twice, the first death and then the second death after judgment. Some people got it so gracious that some aren't even going to die once. It's uh, pretty amazing. But even if we do die this first life, what matters is what's next. This life is short. What matters is what's next. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Eternity. Eternal life with God and his kingdom. The stuff we can't even imagine. It's only by the grace of God. It's only through faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross, the, the sacrifice that he made for us, that we can be saved, that we can receive forgiveness of sins. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, call out to him. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to save you. And he will. Ask him to come into your life and change you. He will. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. I guarantee it. You won't want to be the same. You, you'll be changed. I was changed supernaturally overnight. And he'll change you through the Holy Spirit as well. If you give your life to him, just turn to him. Repent. Uh, repent just means to have a change of mind. It means to have a change of mind about uh, about God, about, about your walk with God. Saying I'm I'm done I'm done with this life I'm done screwing around I'm turning to God I'm turning to Him for forgiveness I'm turning to Him to change me 
He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit, and He'll give you eternal life. That's the end of Je Jeremiah chapter 2. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.